Hello, my name is Wayne Virembowski, and this is the third in our series of walks through the cathedral. We are here now at a shrine. A shrine is a prayer place, a place of devotion. A shrine is oftentimes dedicated to a particular saint or a particular phenomenon. Here we have the shrine of the Sacred Heart. And the shrine is, um, we have uh, votive candles here. Votive candles are having to do with making a contribution or a donation. And of course, the use of candles comes you know, from our early, um, early prayers that were celebrated, like in the catacombs where there was no light and all that. And so they've just come along with us. And there is an attachment to lighting a candle and prayer that we've made, a strong attachment. Here in this statue, this carved statue, uh, we see the wound of Jesus in his hand and we see his heart and we see the flame that's coming from the heart of Jesus, the flame of love and for his love for us. Next, we move to the Stations, Stations of the Cross. The Stations of the Cross, or the Via Dolorosa, or the Via Crucis, they are 14 moments, particular moments, on the day of the crucifixion of Jesus. And they start out telling the story of that day. We see Pilate washing his hands of the whole affair, and Jesus condemned to death. The second station, we, hear, we see Jesus here accepting his cross. The third station, Jesus stumbles, Jesus falls beneath the cross. And we have 14 of these that tell the story of that day, beginning with the trial of Jesus and the condemnation all the way to the 14th station where Jesus is placed in the sepulcher, in the tomb. Another shrine here in the cathedral, this one devoted to St. Joseph. And we see Joseph here with his carpenter tools, his hammer, chisel, square, his 50 saw there, and in this shrine, we have here um, faceted glass windows. Now, faceted glass is different than stained glass. We'll see that in a moment. Faceted glass is, are chunks of glass that has been chiseled or pounded on with a hammer. That's the faceted part of it. And then they are put into um, like a medium, like an epoxy or something to hold them in place. And they are very much like a mosaic. Pieces that make up, um, make up a, a, a picture of some sort. And here we have again the shrine of Joseph. So we have his trusty hammer and his framing square. Next we move to the... Um, stained glass windows of the cathedral. In the cathedral there are 12 windows um, and each of them, and they are stained glass windows. Stained glass is where the, where the pieces of glass are painted with a color and then they are baked at a very high temperature, 1100 degrees. And then that makes that color permanently attached to that piece of glass. And um, these 12 stained glass windows each have a prominent blue component. Again, a color that we associated with the Blessed Mother. All of them have a crown at the top of them and then one of the names or appellations we give to Mary. All of them, all 12 of them, are taken from the litany of the Blessed Mother. At the very end of the litany, 
where we say uh, Mary, queen of confessors, queen of apostles, queen of prophets, queen of patriarchs, queen of the Holy Rosary. Well, each one of these windows is dedicated to one of those names we've given to the Blessed Mother. This particular window came from New York, from a studio in New York, and it was installed and everything was good until we noticed that they misspelled confessors. And so the cathedral was dedicated. Nobody particularly took notice of it. But as soon as the dedication was finished, the window was taken out, boxed up, and sent to New York with a note that says, we don't spell it that way here. And so they corrected the misspelling and sent it back to us. At the doors of the cathedral, in a very grand sense, we have the baptistry. But at each of the other doors, we also have a small baptismal font. And when we come into the church, we bless ourselves with this holy water in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, just as we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's a reminder of our coming into the church, our entering the church, but more important, our becoming church. That's why we have holy water here. The cathedral has two permanent reconciliation rooms, and that tells all, reconciliation. Reconciliation rooms are in churches to show God's forgiveness and love for us, always ready to listen, always ready to forgive. In our churches, we have statues as well. Statues, we have statues to give honor to important persons in our faith life. Here, we have the statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel holding the infant Jesus. And we know it's the Lady of Mount Carmel because of the scapulars that are, the scapular that is in her hands and in the hands of Jesus. At the moment, we have those crowns on both the infant Jesus and Our Lady of Mount Carmel because it's May, the month that we celebrate a special dedication to Mary. And we have statues in our churches, much like we have statues in our public buildings, in our parks, and statues that show the respect and devotion we have to these people, the debt of gratitude that we have for them, and also the important part that they have played in our lives, past and present. Here we have the cathedral organ. It was built in London, Ontario, Canada, and dismantled and brought here and reassembled here um, over a period of several weeks. And it was uh, built by a wonderful craftsman, Gabriel Ney, a German-born uh, craftsman. And um, it's one of the finest organs in all of Northern Michigan. It's a mechanical action organ and the organ has 2,014 separate pipes in it. And some of them much larger than the ones you see in the facade, and some that are half the size of a pencil. More later, 